It's a great day in SimWorld, everybody. Good morning and welcome to SimWorld Today. I'm B-Ron. Alongside me is my co-host, Yells. Good morning, man. How you doing? Glad to be back here after the holiday uh, break, even though we were here yesterday. But, hey, back again. <laughs> hey, we, we grind, man. That's what that's what yeah. business is. There's no off days when you're out here trying to get it. Good stuff yesterday. Great holiday. Glad everyone enjoyed theirs. Is back with us for another episode of SimWorld Today. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's jump right into it, though, shall we? Not, not waste any time. Let's get right, let's get right, 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 right at it. I'm gonna get active immediately. So, Tim Bellardi, as we know, has departed uh, some world, some world prep, H Town. You're gonna see another compilation of some of his things he's done in some world prep throughout his time here. Um, but the, you know, so what is his legacy in some world prep? Uh, where does he rank viewed his, you know, all-time coaches in the league, that kind of thing? Let's just touch on that first. Start there first. All time coaching. I mean, I think I think that's easy. He's I mean, you, those are numbers. Those are stats you pull up. Uh, mm -hmm. 34 yeah. wins, 20 losses. He's third all time in Sim World Prep short history in wins. Um, there's a couple people gaining on him. The only two in front of him are Brad Lee, um, the, the habitual runner up for the championship. Um, no. <laughs> just saying what it is, man. Um, and then uh, Coach Dodge, who has done phenomenal things, his, his arch nemesis, if you will. Um, 630 winning percentage. Great coach. Great coach on the court. Excellent coach. Um, yep. A fan favorite. Uh, a lot of people loved him out there in the coach in the amongst the coaching ranks. Um, our fans, a lot of players loved him. I had the opportunity of talking to the guy um, on numerous occasions. Wonderful human being. I love him, man. He's a, he's a great guy. Um, but the question that you asked was legacy. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna say for me, before I look at all of those things that I just said, before I before I see his personality that he's a great guy. Um, and before I hear all the kudos um, that all the fans give him, I know Rick loves him. If Rick had a if Rick had a brother from another mother, it'd be Tim Bellardi. Uh, Rick Blaze, <laughs> uh, that is from Blaze and Takes. Um, and before I see thirty four wins, um, because there are a couple coaches that have more wins than him. Before I see that, I see this that this uh, this head coach has been on. He was on three separate teams. In um, would I say a season and a half or two seasons? Two seasons, yeah. yeah. He was with he was with Gotham Five for two. Well, look, no, because I'm 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 gonna frame it the way it needs to be framed. Within a season and a half, he had been on three teams <laughs> because he fin he completed a full season um, with Gotham Five when they were formerly New York Stars and they played great under him. Yeah. After that, he completed about a half a season or less uh, with Latin America. Um, and then he left Latin America, and he's completed what five games? He coached five games with H Town. So when I look yeah, at his he was legacy, with Gotham Five at the start of their season last season, then then he uh, got uh, you know had things come up, had to leave, and um, you know then came back, went to Latin America. Yeah, like you said, and then you know went to H Town in the off season. Yeah. And coach them for five games or so, but continue. Yeah. So as you go through the thanks, you can clear up the the chronology, chronolo yeah. the chronology. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> great guy. I know he had some things going on, but the legacy is going to be: Hey, he left some kids high and dry on multiple occasions on my front. That's in the circles that I've talked to, um, and of of my opinion of what I see first is those were the scenarios that occurred. Um, regardless of the circumstances, there's kids and, and people that are dependent on your parents um, that signed up to have their kids play for an organization or in some instances to play for you, play for that coach um, particularly, and then he's no longer there. Um, you, know I'm, you know I'm huge on commitment, B-Ron. So um, that's what I see first. That's what stands out. Uh, again, top one of the top coaches in Sim World Prep. Uh, upstanding, upstanding young man, uh, great human being. I love, I love what he is as a person. Um, but a lot of times, or not, most times, I believe our accountability lies um, with those who we're in charge of. And when you're leading a team, those those kids are kind, of, they're left, they're left out to dry at this moment. Okay, so I hear what you're saying on that on that front, but I think that's being a little too harsh on the guy. Um, because again, 
you know, facts. From, 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 it's facts, it's, be wrong. Look, look, look. Oh, okay, that's facts, sure. But you can also look at it from the other end. You can also say that you know he has other things that are going on Absolutely. outside of basketball, Absolutely. and those and those things are more important than basketball. Yeah. So is that is it, it to me to me looking at that and pointing that out? Be it facts or not, does him a disservice. That paints him to be a bad guy. When in my opinion, that's not what this is. Um, I hear you. That that's that's how I'm that's how I'm looking at what you're saying and what those people, the other people, they're gonna say. If you're gonna say that stuff, that's in my opinion a little bit a little bit disrespectful to him in terms of things that he has going on outside of basketball. Because. Yeah. The it's question, good. question, and I, and the I'm question a, you asked, the question you asked me, Ron, was what is his legacy? So when I look at legacy, and I, I won't, dis, I won't discredit anything you had to say, but I look at it like this: if I go outside here, hey, in Houston, um, Houston, where we're shooting this show, it's it's eighty seven degrees on Christmas Day sometimes. Um, to say that the sun's hot is not harsh; the sun is hot. Um, so when you when we talk about his legacy. Legacy on basketball is not, to me, is not saying, hey, what personal matters do you have to take care of? Because you do. You have to take care of your family. You got to take care of your health. Those things come first for me as well. And I totally understand it. When we look at this basketball legacy, the kids, when they go to sign up to play for Coach Bellardi, are they going to look at what you mentioned first? Or are they going to look at, hey, my kids want him as a leader. Is he going to be here full time or not? And that's I what I think the legacy is going to look at first. I think you look at the whole picture. I think there's more to it than just when, but then both of our sides. There's more to it than just both of those sides. You have to look at the players that he coached and you know had success success with. Great you know, success. Ron Johnson Odom, Che King, mm-hmm. uh, you know all the kids that got the five in his uh, first season there. What Chance Milton, J- Chance Milton Jones, Chance Milton yeah. Jones. Yeah, you know, there's so. There's a lot of things that go into it. Sure. Corey, Am- Corey uh-huh. Ams this season. We started to see Corey Ams flourish. Yeah. I, I won't take any of that away from him yeah. at all. Sure. Those, those other things do come into play, but I think that legacy is the entire picture and not one part of it. Like I, like, like I think maybe, maybe maybe we're making it out to be in this conversation here. Um, so overall, I think that uh, Coach Bellardi Coach, Coach Bellardi leaves a legacy behind, and at least it's something for – for other coaches to uh, aspire to in terms of those kind those things that people say about you when you leave, whether, whether he comes back or not, remains to be seen. We don't know. We would like to see him come back, but that's on him to decide once he's ready to. And you know, we'll go for we'll, we'll go from there, right? Look, hey, and I'll start. I'll start sounding like Stephen A. Before we get off this topic, I, I love <laughs> I love Coach Bellardi. I've had you know we, we I've, I've reached out to him personally um, because I think highly of him. Um, so I. This is our job to kind of talk about the lens that things are going to be seen through. And fans will chime in. They'll give their opinion, obviously. Yeah. Uh, we'll love to hear everybody's opinion on that. Um, but just from my opinion, uh, that, that's that's where I stand on the lens that we come from. And that's, that's the reason that, that there's so many perspectives. Um, but from a basketball standpoint, B-Ron, from a basketball standpoint, when you have kids and you sign them up to go play for Dean Smith, this happens every day, and Dean Smith may be looking to go. Dean Smith may be looking to go coach another team or quit for that season. That plays a factor on if your kid goes to that school or not. Those are just the facts. I I will not disagree with you there. Not disagree. Let's move on though. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, let's Controversy. Do it. Controversy man. on a Tuesday. That's, like that's crazy, it. man. Look, what's going on? What's going on with the Queen City Kings? Oh, more controversy. Because there, there's there's. They are extremely talented on paper, uh, and their roster constructed is really good, but they don't have the record to uh, back that up right now. They are sitting at one and three in the Southern Region. It's the last last place in the Southern Region, you guys. We were coming into the season expecting them to be one of the top teams in the region with the roster they have. Renzo Bryant, Nick Hugo, Stevie Bryant, Marco Jacobs is, is coming on really well in his uh, first season. Carter Fields, you know, a lot of a lot of the kids you expected from last season coming in to join uh, Queen City, and they're they're floundering a little bit here to begin the season. Um, <laughs> what's 
What's the problem here? <laughs> <laughs> um, big problem for I'm me. I'm rubbing is my head together right now. I'm rubbing, I got my, my my hand, my temple, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Go ahead, man. B. Ron, I may have been on. I may have been on one of the calls when I said this. I have a huge problem when I watch this team. When I see how many shots, and it's it's just kind of a standard AAU ball thing. Um, the guards get the ball in their hands and they get to put up one million shots. Um, and some of your guys that you want to see roll into the rim on that pick and roll never get the ball out of that pick and roll because um, the shooter's going. to Shoot, right? Shooters, shooters gonna shoot. That's the state, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Marco Jacobs, I think he's gonna be one of the top kids in the nation. Once he gets to Sim World U, I think he's gonna he's gonna set Sim World U on fire. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. he's already setting Sim World Prep on fire. 20, 20, almost 21 points a game. Fairly efficient from deep, fairly efficient um, from everywhere else. Five and a half assists. But that's where you look at the stats, right? That's that's the problem. When you look at those stats, those stats look great. You know who's not touching the ball in the pick and roll enough? You remember Hugo Mania last season? I do. You remember I Hugo do. I Mania? I can't forget it. You remember on the pick and roll? You just threw it up there somewhere, anywhere, and he would go, we'll get, go that get that it. thing. You put it up on the glass as long as the spacing was right. he just go get it. He was mm-hmm. going crazy at one point. And I could point – we can look at Nick, uh, Cairo Windsor, who should be a, a, a major focal point for this team. I know he's young, um, and maybe the young line <laughs> rules in effect. Let it make him earn his minutes, only 11 minutes a game. Um, Renzo Bryant, not looking bad at all. Sky Durant and Nick Hugo is what's standing I can, I can start with Sky Durant. He's shooting like 42%. He's made like a, a three and a half. Uh, for the season, he should like nineteen yeah. percent from deep. Um, expecting him to do big things, he was kind of kind of a poor man's version of D'Angelo Jordan. Um, but he's not there yet. He he looks terribly inefficient. But more importantly, Nick Hugo seven points a game, twenty six minutes. He's got the minutes. He's getting. He's on the glass. He's just not getting the action. And when I look at that, like I say, you look at the stats. Marco Jacobs putting up points, and that's where people get hung on stats. When I watch the game, because the eye test matters. Y'all can say what y'all want, all that analytics stuff that everyone likes to throw out there. I don't see Nick Hugo getting the ball on the screen and roll. I see I me and Rick had this good this good little joke. I'm sure everybody knows this on the hood. In the hood, you play with a good guy on the court. Um and, or excuse me, a guy on the court and maybe he's really big or really he's really muscular. Um but his 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 ball game maybe ain't all of that. He he's like, "Man, I need some shot attempts." You tell him, "Go get it off the glass, fool." You tell him that's where you're going to get your points. Go get it off the glass. It looks like that's what they're saying to Nick Hugo. You go get you go get it off the glass. You want this ball. That's the problem with me. It's easy. There's a lot going on over there, and I'm, I think you summed it up really well, honestly. Um, I think that's one of the biggest problems, but I don't – there's there, – there's, yeah, I mean, I, I can't really put it into words, Yells, because you did it so eloquently. <laughs> uh, I don't <laughs> know if it was eloquent, I, I, but <laughs> – Eloquently enough to where I can't I – can't, um, for my own thoughts, uh, but oh. because because I, I do agree with you. I mean, yeah, it, Nick Hugo needs to be more involved in the offense. Um, I think they might need to run a little bit of a faster pace yeah. uh, style too. Absolutely, that's also a big thing for me from what I've seen from their games. There's just a lot, and they need to figure it out. And you know that when we come into the season, you know, talk about expectations and that kind of thing, and how the media puts those things on you and that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, because we know what these players can do do you do you want to say you want to say everyone's gonna everyone's gonna be bad everyone's gonna play you know everyone's gonna you, everyone's gonna be gonna gonna suck we're like no we're not gonna do that there are teams that are you know in that a tier b tier so on and so forth you're gonna ha- that's how this works and you're expected to be a good team you can say that the media put those put those kinds of, of, of things on you sure but you put the roster together you know, you made the team. So, you know, coming in as the underdogs of the season or whatever, like, no, you weren't underdogs coming into the season because you put the roster together. This was a good roster coming in. It's not coming together right now. Hopefully it does, but yeah. Yeah. Figure it out, man. Well, again, for me, I, the stats don't tell the whole story, but I will use stats to make this one point. Nobody's made um, over one three on the team except for Marco Jacobs and Sky Durant. Uh, I think we let them off the hook a lot how we do some of these other squads sometimes. Uh, a lot mm-hmm. of talent, you know what they don't have? Shooting. 
So if you can't if you can't spread, well, you say you they should play up tempo and space the court out. They don't have enough shooters to do it. So it's just everybody getting their own shots off. Pretty shots on uh pretty shots on Sim World today or in clips or when people are catching pretty highlight jumpers. That's not a shooter. The bucket going through the hole is the shooter, and they don't have very many shooters on this team. Um, that's the other problem. Hard to run a pick and roll uh, with your big man running through the lane when it's congested and nobody's knocking down the jumper. That's how right, I see they're it. Not, they're not, take, not taking the shooter's game into account that can collapse on the big man, not worried about the guy you know, yeah. with the ball. In they got a lot of guys that will put it on your head and dunk it, but not very many that will knock down the jumper. I see two guys that will take the jumper, uh, but I don't see a lot of guys that want to knock it down from deep. So Fair enough. keep Fair it moving, enough. man. Yeah, 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 let's go. So – Moving on, the Neo region, man. It's looking real good right now. Looking real good. You know, Cascadia and Heartland, both undefeated. Rocky Mountain and Showtime, 3-1, and 2-1, and one, respectively. All these teams, have, these those four teams I mentioned, have a combined two losses between them. Is the, it, is the Neo region really the toughest region in SimWorld, in SimWorld Prep? That's what a lot of people say. A lot of people say it though. A lot of people say it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of people say it. I don't. I don't know if we can argue it. Like you said, Cat. I look at the records. Um, quality wins for Cascadia. Quality wins for Heartland Zombie Stars. Uh, Rocky Mountain looking tough. I mean, they they look really good. Uh, then you got yeah. Showtime Basketball. Uh, we know they're pretty good. Bay Area is coming on here. Um, beyond the arch, a little bit of a struggle. I think Best Coast will pick it up. Really disappointed by rain and trades, but the season's not over. I'm just holding out hope because they got big Chafet Towns um, and, and uh, a few other pieces there uh, that yeah. remain nameless. I think so. I mean, I, I think so. I, I thought that, you know, I said earlier, and I know what I said, Founders Reason, that's the region where it's going to be tough to get wins, uh, but they've let mm -hmm. me down early. Um, I've seen some tough play out of them, Originators, Lakeshore Drive looking tough, Beasts of the East always going to be tough, but the record is not not looking so hot. Bad Boys uh, have fallen off in the North, picking it up. Philadelphia, Gotham, Run DMV, where's East Coast basketball gone? My goodness, where are you going? Uh, Neo Region's looking toughest to me. Neo region is they are looking tough. Not gonna lie to you, they really are. I, I still think the southern region is is the toughest region, uh, in symbol prep. But the knee region is definitely that you know one A one B, uh, um, kind of situation there. Cascadia is Cascadia Heartlander looking fairly good to begin the season, and it's it's tough. To, it's tough to argue with the southern region. You know, to both having two one loss teams while the knee region well the knee region has two undefeated teams at the top of their region. Um, and that region is very, very strong. I'm not gonna sit here and, and argue with that. I think they are one of one of the toughest. Yes, the toughest. I still think that belongs to the southern region. Um, and I think as we get more, as we get deeper into the season, I think we'll see that we'll see more of that uh, come into play as these records start to take more shape and these teams start to beat up on each other more. So yeah, <laughs> I hear you. I, I got to say on that one. Yeah, well, but um, we got a guess go though. Yeah, we sure do. We sure do. Joining us this morning on Sim World today is from, one of the new from the southern the region. Tribe. Yeah, <laughs> yep, from the southern region. Look at that southern region. Southern region represent JJ Hoops of the Indy Tribes. Good morning, young man. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Good morning. Good morning. It's ha uh, we are overjoyed to have you here with us this morning. Hope you're enjoying your your break from school and you know. A little bit of the uh, uh, you know off games going on today and all of that stuff. So hey, good to have you here with us. Really appreciate you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, guys. Of course, of course. Let's jump right into it because you know we got some questions for you, man. You know it. So, it but I'm gonna start you off with an easy one. How are you enjoying your time so far with the Indy Stripes this season? And what is it like sharing the floor with Dylan Harper? The Indy Stripes are different, and it's a good different. You know, I feel like I'm able to be myself around my teammates and coach Sauragon, you know, they enable me and they give me the chance to be able to lead the team on and off the court. And that's what I wanted coming into the season. You know, I wanted to be my own, you know, self. And I feel like I can do that here at Indy and playing with Dylan Harper. I'm, I'm able to develop my game and, you know, he opens up the floor for all of us, you know, you know, people double teaming Dylan Harper, Given 
opportunities for all of us to shoot. It's been a great experience when we're doing Harper. You know, it's amazing. That's wonderful. That's wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Yells, you got a question for him? or? Uh, yeah, you know, I know I was going to let you get all the good, all the nice, friendly ones. I got some oh, questions. No, I, my, my, my next one wasn't going to be so nice. My next one, because I, I, I had to ask this one. But I'll let you go ahead and get your question in first. No, right? go ahead. Please be right. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So my second one, uh, JJ, uh, now, that you, now that you've played against, uh, Kai, you know, Kai, Kai Killens, you know, how has that relationship uh, improved? since that game or is it is it one of the things where like i'm still you're still kind of standoffish with him given what happened in the offseason between you two and how you chose to go to indy versus going with him to gulf coast <laughs> uh it's improved um you know we don't necessarily despise each other as much as we did in the <laughs> offseason but you know it's not like oh but all the brotherly love that we had you know coming into the season as well. You know, I, I did take a lot of flack for saying that Kai would be a top 10 similar prep player. Um, he's a baller. You know, I, I respect him. You know, he showed up against us and he got the job done. So I I give him his props. He's one hell of a player. Um, but we're not like best friends or anything. You know, I'm, I'm still going to look to kick his butt in March. But you know, <laughs> uh, they got lucky. We'll just we'll just leave it at that. Okay, okay. Because y'all are brothers, cousins. I can't remember. Yeah, we're brothers. Name. Brothers. Okay. All right. But it's not like it's not like you had that one game and now it's always now it's honky door. You know, y'all are good. Yeah. No, this is far from over. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Well, from one piece of drama to another one, uh, Indy has been the source of lots of drama over the last few seasons. Um, from 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 the ground zero season to last season um, to what you guys just mentioned, and then there was uh, the drama. I don't want to stir it back up, but I just gotta ask. Um, coach was your coach was actually suspended for the last two games after you know some back and forth there. Then there was the the matter with Dylan Harper not playing enough minutes. What's the what's the internal sense in the locker room um, between you and you know with you and the team and. And everybody else, Ken Fields and Rivermere, you know, and, and coaching yourself about um, how you guys can kind of cool the perception of, of you guys. Because uh, fair enough, you guys are kind of looked like the you guys know that y'all are looked at kind of there's a there's a lens of the teams looked on because a lot of stories keep coming out, man. What What's the story internally? Um, Internally, we're just trying to, you know, push that to the side, you know, we, I'm Coach came to us in the locker room. He acknowledged he made a mistake, and he didn't want to let his drama get in the way of uh, our success on the court. And that's one of the many things that I love about Coach Saragon, you know? Um, we just try to win games. We're trying to change this indie narrative of the indie drama and all of this nonsense, you know? So we're trying to make our owner proud, make our friends proud, and we're trying to stay focused and win games on the court and get take care of business. It's a good way to go about it. How about those jerseys, too, by the way? Big fan. Fire. Best jerseys <laughs> in the league. Best jerseys in the league, y'all. All right. All right. That's all I got, B-Ron. Yeah, that was, that was all I had, too. Thank you very much, JJ, yeah, for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a good rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you back on the court soon. I do play today, actually. So. Oh, yeah. We'll look forward good to seeing to you back, tonight. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Of course, of course. Take care of yourself. All right, you too. Hey. All right, that was JJ Hoops. A great way to end the show. Thank you all for joining us here today on Sim World Today. Remember, as always, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff over there because a lot of Sim World TV action, a lot of Sim World prep action, a lot of Sim World stuff going on around here between all our shows and uh, and the games we got going on throughout the season. Stay locked in there and remember. Sim World is the only place where you can see the game, be the game. We'll see you tomorrow.
Sim World Sports.